G'day and hello good people, it is Milmo here back for part 2 of this prepping for a level up and this is probably going to be the biggest video of the three videos but it's probably the most important and so this is number 2 characters to level up with. Uh, firstly I'm going to explain a few different ways to get and obtain a whole heap of characters but one of the main ways to do it is through your training grounds. Uh, first up it's probably best if you have a spare training ground so most people have four training grounds essentially if you can keep one training ground spare and free it allows you to navigate through the other three quite easily and add on plays and it just makes things a whole lot easier if you have that third or that fourth training ground um, spare I should say it just makes it a whole lot easier but to start with you use you basically using a double combination of uh, things and training so what you're going to start off with is these low end training so you have weapons training medical strategic and tactical and essentially what you're going to do is you're going to have two training grounds packed with choose two of these say let's just go with the first two weapons and medical so you're going to have two training grounds one pack with medical one pack with weapons and you're going to keep adding on characters into those training grounds and it basically you're going to not let that timer run out that's what you're aiming for you don't want that timer to run out you want to keep packing on these trainers in your third one you're going to have something very different running and like i said having that fourth one spare just makes it a whole lot easier to navigate through just simply because you will be collecting players if your roster's not full you actually collect players as you go and you might not want to be doing that because you might want to be doing other things with your roster and packing up like that is going to make things harder and especially when you don't want to collect survivors just yet it's better to have that fourth one three and be able to navigate through now with this third one basically what you want to run in the third one is either your elite training your special training or your legendary training it depends on what level your training ground is at to what you have access to to which one you would choose but either your elite training special training or legendary training will work and what you basically doing with that third one is you're getting a bank of food and survivors ready for the level up so like as you see here 150 food 45 for the special training takes two days so these ones take a lot longer in, in regards to duration and the days and the time and then it also is a lot more consumable in regards to your food and also your survivors so it takes a lot more from you which allows you to stock a lot more and store a lot more for these level ups which you then take these guys out and you actually pack them into your medical and your weapons training in the other two and that's going to give you thousands and thousands and thousands of survivors so you're able to have characters to level up essentially the characters within your roster you're just going to have a ton of characters which if you bank up your food right is going to be great because that's going to be what it wins you that's going to give you these four million scores these five million scores and things like that so that's what you want to do you essentially want to run two training grounds one with either like i said for example medical and weapons let's just say we're running two with those and we have about a thousand survivors up in both of those and our counts at two three four days that's really good and you don't want to let that timer run out the moment you you let that time run out that's when you screw yourself over um and you've got a lot of characters in there that you can't do nothing with and you sort of halt your um, prep for this level up so definitely don't let the timers run out in those other two and then you have a third one which is running the big guns like the special training the elite training the legendary training where it's costing a whole lot of survivors and a whole lot of food which means when you have these big duration times up of like 119 days and things like that you have a ton of food and survivors bank to either a use the survivors to pump into the other two training grounds yes and get more characters or b get all the food back because training the medical strategic tactical and things like that actually costs a whole lot of less food than what these guys do so you're gaining a whole heap of food back and you're not losing anything so you're not losing your survivors or your food it's not like the work shop or anything like that where you lose 50% of what you put in you're actually gaining what you have back from these training grounds and it's allowing you to pack the other two with more thousands or pack another one and create more characters when you need them and also get food back when you need it to level up these guys so like I said your training grounds are pretty much fairly es essential to how you gain characters and how many characters you have access to I only use three uh, most people only use three I keep the fourth one free just because it makes things a whole lot easier to navigate in and it makes me a lot feel a lot more comfortable in regards to not letting those timers run out because I'm not in fear of not being able to add more on um, by all means when you go into the level up you buy all chance if you want to pull things out and then get your training grounds up to a 
certain count and you're happy with that and you want to put more into the other one, you could do that. But like I said, it's it's a lot easier if you keep that fourth one free. And I recommend keeping the fourth one free. It just makes things a whole lot easier. And two training grounds packed with, you know, 2,000 plays or something like that is more than enough. And then that third one packed with, you know, those high-end training, it's more than enough to get you through, you know, very big scores and through level ups and definitely get you that first place if you prep well enough. Uh, probably something in which I will mention in the next part is how to farm for these sorts of items. So you're going to have to make sure you have heaps of items also. So prepping is like a multi-layered process and there's a lot of things that actually go into it and make sure, I guess you're maximizing your chance to get those high-end scores, which is what this um, three-part series is trying to explain to you all the different, I guess, ways and all the things you have to have ready and well prepped for a level up to make sure you're succeeding in not only getting these big scores but getting the place you want and being fully effective. Now, if we move on past the training grounds, another way to actually get players to upgrade is by storing your trainers in your roster. Now, I will talk about tokens just purely after this and tokens are a great way to actually make sure you're not filling up your roster too much. So when it comes to um, storing trainers in your roster, you want to try and minimize it as much as possible. So if you're able to keep your trainers in crates or you're able to keep them in tokens and things like that, then by all means, keep them out of your roster if you can. You don't want to pack your roster with a whole heap of trainers, but if you've got no choice but other than to collect them, uh, then you have to collect them. And make sure you store them. I actually only store Brady, Basil, and Benedict. So I only store three stars to five star trainers in my roster. And that's only purely if I can't get out of the way of actually getting them. If I don't need to actually pick the trainers up, I won't pick them up. Just to keep my roster space nice and, I guess, free. Another way in actually obtaining characters which we'll move on quickly from, is your Supply Depot. Your Supply Depot sometimes has Burt's in there, so there's another few extra points. Um, I have more than enough Supply Points. This will depend on whether you have enough Supply Points um, available to you, but I have more than enough, so I can utilise my Supply Points. If I truly wanted to, you know what, I could probably get that Persona Trainer. I could get that also. I could buy some more gear if I started running low on food. So just remember that your Supply Depot is there. It's not going to give you a whole lot, but it's just there just in case things get a bit tight. And you know what, it might have a nice little trainer some birds in there or something like that that will just help you that little bit more and give you a bit more character so i'll go ahead and get these birds like i said it's a good little way to i guess obtain some more characters some trainers and also some gear if you start running low on it it's not going to give you a whole lot but it might give you enough to get you there now like i was saying about tokens they are a great way to store a whole heap of characters without clogging up your roster, your training grounds, or anything like that. They are absolutely a great way. So basic tokens, I have about 3, 3K, 4K of those guys. I have a ton of basic tokens sitting there. That's going to give me a whole heap of not only one-star characters, also two-star characters and three-star characters. And one-star characters ain't overly that bad, being that you can use them to get your rushes up and those sort of objectives. So... But tokens, great way to actually obtain a whole heap of characters without, I guess, jamming up your roster or your training grounds. That is a great way. Also, you got your elite tokens, your helper tokens. You, you just keep hoarding them. Basically, that's what you want to do. You want to hoard these guys. Uh, you want to have some, I guess, a little bit of self-control and not open them. And you just want to hoard them for times like this when you need a whole heap of characters or a whole heap of trains, which your elite items will probably give you. And like I said, that's a great way to actually free up your roster space and make sure you're not, I guess, chucking a whole heap of trainers or characters into your roster is by just hoarding the shit out of your tokens, basically. Just, yeah, just basically save them. Save them. Absolutely save them. If you want to do a big level up, save your tokens. Start now. Do it for months and months. You have a whole lot when it comes to when you want to pull the plug on that level up. Same with your training grounds. If you start now and you're doing it for a while, you'll have a whole lot when you want to pull the plug and you'll be more than comfortable and probably feel a whole lot comfortable. So like you can see here, I've got a ton of tokens ready to go, which is going to give you not only access to a whole heap of trainers, but also a whole heap of characters. So I'm going to have more than enough, not only for my training grounds, but then my tokens. And then you, like I said, supply depot, you think of all these things of how you're getting all these characters. You're going to have a whole lot of characters that you're going to be able to upgrade those 
big end characters in your roster and also the little end ones that you might be doing to get those objectives so that was part two um part three will be out soon i hope you did enjoy as always if you have anything to add please feel free to but thank you for watching bye